Previously on The Bill. Talk to me, Tony. You know me. No, I don't. Your husband has been arrested on suspicion of rape. I wouldn't rape anyone. Okay, right, right. This might come out of the blue, but um, how about moving to your place? You don't, you don't, you don't think it's a good idea? burglar alarm has been playing up. It's gone off five nights in a row. But this is the first break-in. Telephones, answer machines, printers, about eight grand's worth. Right, these two. Suspects all over. Where'd you see them in action? The CCTV doesn't pick them up till they come into the front car park. It's turning into a domestic. Oh, no. Is that our engagement ring? They might kiss and make up. You think so, Phil? Yes, I do, Sam. Sorry, say that again? If the ring's still there, they might come back. Well, uh, well let's go and check the car park. Yeah. This boyfriend of yours, <clears throat> is he upsetting you? Stuart wants to move in with me. What, and you're thinking about it? I'll try to sound a bit pleased for me. <laughs> Who's that? It's Kate. Oh. Look, she only calls me if there's trouble. Yeah. Kate? What? What's the matter with Alfie? Hey, hey, one second, I'm going to step outside. What do you mean, Mr. He's all right now. Where? I'm going to call you back on the landline. I'd like to talk to you about an incident that took place here last night. Come on, come on, Wait! Come on! Come on! Come on! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Don't even think about it! I'm alright. Yeah. I'm fine. What was that about Alfie? What? That's all I know is he can't breathe. I was going to try their phone in the office. Don't ring Kate. Go on. Alfie's more important, please. Sure. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> right, there's still no answer at Kate's place either. Right. Jump in your car, get going. No, I've got to run it past the DI. No, get going. I'll square it for you. But it's going to take a long time for me to get the whales Just in back. Get going. Alfie's all that matters. Look, good luck. Let me know what happens. Listen, what I said about Stuart earlier. Yeah. Certain coppers, they're just after promotion, all right? If you offer him the DI's job, I'm telling you, he'd take it straight away, he'll be up. So you're worried about me being left high and dry? Just don't get out, that's all. Well, either I'm paranoid. You're right. We were talking about you. Oh, you were? Hmm. Are you on a job? Are you busy? Well, depends what you got in mind. Well, we're looking for an engagement ring. Hey, we said anything about marriage, I'm talking about living together, that's... No, no, it's evidence. Get in the car. Excuse me, do you need any help? I'm making to see I do my set Thank you. Now, I know the face. Don't tell me. It's, um, Kezia, right? Well, you can get a better digging than that. You earn that for a bet? You know it's only a pre-trial here, don't you? I've still got to look the part, girl. Right. Well, fine, Matt. I'll see you in my office. Right. Oh, I've just left him in the canteen, actually. OK. Matt was the same. He was up at 6.30 this morning polishing his shoes. No, my one and only suit comes out for weddings, funerals and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> I know there's not much chance of being called out, but I've sweated up anyway. Well, it doesn't hurt doing your homework. But it's a five-minute hearing. They'll read the charges, set the trial date and remand Durante in custody. The defence can't dispute the forensic evidence. With one of Durante's hairs found on Sean, he might even change his plea. That scumbag will never hold his hand up. He'll never admit to raping any of the three victims. 
It's a pity we couldn't find anything to prosecute him for the Beth and Caroline rapes, but the Sean evidence is enough. When we do get to trial, anything but life, and he's had a result. Well, let's hope so. Because I've promised them all that we put him away. We're all saying that's when they'll be able to start their lives again. Well, we'll see how it goes, eh? You know, you still haven't said what I'm moving in, Sam. I just need time to think about it, Stuart. All right. Well, I don't see the problem. I mean, it's, it makes perfect sense, the same as we are now. It's just that I don't have to keep rushing off to get a cab home. That's the best you can come up with, is it? You won't have to call for a cab anymore. Well, I suppose um, it would save on petrol, too, because your place is nearer than Nick, isn't it? It's, it's a joke. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll do you a deal. If I find the ring, we move in together. In other words, you found the ring. <laughs> oh, stop it. Sam Nixon, will you be mine? <laughs> look, at look at the size of that sparkle. Oh. They'll be back, won't they? Uh, they've been back. And they've gone. These are new faces to me. Well, False plate on the scooter. You didn't nick them? Whoa! I, I got thrown against the car, but I'm all right, you know. I thought Phil was on the case. It wasn't Phil's fault, actually. He had a call on his mobile. <laughs> he's too busy chatting on his phone. Well, it was an emergency, and he's had to shoot to Wales. You know what? That is typical Phil. He drops you in it and expects everyone else to clear up the mess. His phone kept breaking up, right? And all he could hear was that Alfie wasn't breathing. And I feel sorry for him, and I hope the kids are all right. You could have ended up in St. Hughes. What do you hear me complaining? I was thrown against a car, and I'm fine. That's why I insisted he went to Wales and I will square it with a DI. You know what? If Phil's got personal problems, let Phil sort them out, okay? It's as if you can't see it. Phil is nothing more than a user. We are talking about someone who is driving to Kate's place not knowing if his son is dying. What is it with you? Sam, can you tell the DI about Phil yet? About me being on this robbery case? Uh, no, not yet. Are you going to? Oh, he was a family man. You understand the need for Phil to take a compassionate day off? Oh, I'm sure he would. But this is about teamwork, isn't it? Phil and I started this job together. I want his name on it. His name results, his figures are well up. Yeah, well, he'd do the same for me. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I just don't get it. It's just the way I want to play it, Stuart. So let's get on with the job in hand. You heard, Cad? The home said it was a female resident. Yeah, and I'll just be happy on knowing that Dad's all right. My mum's missing. They say she's been gone all night. OK, uh, let's go in and talk. What's your name, sir? Martin Thorpe. Mum's Audrey Thorpe. And what makes you think that Audrey's missing? Because it's not just Mum disappeared. All her money's gone too. It's 67 grand. Mm. I'll check Mum's room. Found this in a drawer from her bank. Zero balance. Her life savings are gone. Right, um, could you just start from the beginning for me, sir? Eight o'clock this morning they call me. Can't find Mum. Her bed hasn't been slept in. Twelve hours she could have been missing. Four hundred quid a week. We're gonna need a photograph, sir. Mum's 71. She isn't in the best health. It's old age more than anything. She's frail. Her mind started to go. That's why she needs round-the-clock care. The thought of her wandering the streets. Um, why don't you go and talk to the other residents and I'll check with the bank. Dad? Dad? All right. It's Tony. Dad? I'm here on a case. I'm going to pop back in about five minutes. We'll have a chat, all right? OK. I'm going to prove this is...
is all a big mistake. The defense have asked to discuss something before the hearing. You think they want to do? Well, seeing as we're watertight, they've got no chance. No, Dad. We're trying to find Audrey. She's missing. I don't know why you're bothering. Audrey can look after herself. So you haven't seen her since last night? No. Not that I can think of. Uh, Tony, sorry. Audrey has been seen since 7 o'clock last night. She was last seen in the dining room. Another care assistant says that it's not the first time she's wandered off. Well, from what her son said, you wouldn't think she was capable. Anyway, this is Derek Pierce. He's the caretaker here. Do you know him? Yeah, I've seen him Potter in a bit. The bank says that Audrey's £67,000 has been transferred into his account. What, they just handed it over? Maybe Derek went in there and organised it with Audrey. They were more than friendly, according to the bank manager. He didn't seem to think there was a problem. And the home manageress issued a written warning to Derek, telling him to stop bothering Audrey and hanging around her bedroom. I mean, she obviously doesn't like him, so he's a weirdo. She thought straight away he had something to do with this. And he hasn't turned up for work? Derek's booked a fortnight's annual leave starting today. Come on, Derek, if you're in there, open the door. Or we'll be forced to put it in. Go on. Lexical Communications had any trouble there a while? Uh, yes, they have. It's gone off four nights in a row. Um, each time the keyholder races back, but the premises is secure and there's no break-in. Now, let me guess. Last night, after so many false alarms, the keyholder decides he's going to stay home and have dinner before he heads back. You got it in one? Well, I ran a check around the district. Barton Street have had two similar break-ins. Stafford Row have had one. All three were office premises again. Same type of gear was nicked. Uh, they're sending over copies of the case files, but they ain't got any suspects. It's an old trick, though. I need a villain for it years ago. That's why she was on the scooter last night. Would you like to explain further? Depends on whether you're still crossing me or not. <laughs> All right. They set off the alarm without breaking into the place, right? They wait for the keyholder to show up, search the place, and then they follow him home. And she waits outside, and because of the few times before, he thinks the alarm is playing up, so he doesn't rush back. She phones the boyfriend. The alarm's already off, so he's free to kick the door in. All we've got is the ring. Let's run with it. Nip up there uh, and tell them there's no sign of the old girl. Oh, yeah. Since when did you make sales now? I've been driving us around all morning. You do the leg work. Someone had every night. I only had one in the pub. I went home and got an early night in. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sarge. Look, we've done a door-to-door -door round the care home. No one remembers seeing Audrey last night or this morning. Oh, there's no sign of Derek in his flat either. Hey, ask that lad if he's seen them, will you? Excuse me. No, oh, yeah, I'm talking to you. You stand still unless you want me to start giving you some grief. Stand still! Derek Pierce, you know him? No. The guy who lives up there, you know him? No. What about this woman? No. You sure? Yes. If I find out... Stand still. If I find out you're lying. Everything all right, bud? Hey, go on. Next time I'll look at respect. He hasn't seen either of them. These pictures are of Audrey in the bedroom at home. Oh, this Derek must be some kind of pervert. Okay, you two. Go and ask around the other flats. Yeah, how's Alfie? Oh, I'm glad to hear that. No, I could tell from your voice. Kids, eh? So you on your way back? Right. That's good. Phil, if you're going to stay in Wales for a while, I don't know how long I can cover for you. No, I know it makes sense that you're already there. All right. Don't worry. Take as long as you need. I've got everything sorted this end. Yep. Bye.
Kate, she tried Alfie on some cow's milk and then he had an allergic reaction and he started hyperventilating and couldn't breathe. But he's alright now. So, uh, what, Phil's not coming back? Well, he just wants a few hours with Alfie. I mean, you, you can hardly blame him. Well, they recognise them. They came in to buy the ring about three weeks ago. Great! So we know who they are. Uh, they found the cell slip, but there's no details. Uh, they paid about 1200 in cash. They were all smiles when they came out. Uh, well, they looked at the ring, went away to think about it. The salesman remembers that they went around the corner to pick up some dry cleaning. Somewhere where you usually leave a phone number. Thanks for this. I hope they haven't scarped already. It's a result, Stuart. Do I look a bit thin? It's since Phil phoned, isn't it? I don't see a problem. Look, I am as pleased as you are that Alfie's all right, OK? Yeah, but you don't want to cover for Phil. No, because it's typical. I'm supposed to lie for the guy while he swans off to Wales for a day out with his family. Whether you like it or not, Stuart, Phil is a part of this team, and if we have problems, we cover for each other. You might be happy to let him walk all over you, but if I get a result here, I ain't letting Phil take the credit. Now, I'm going to call CAD and get an address for this mobile. We've got major, major problems. The defence are challenging the forensic evidence. But Gerenti's hair was found on the victim. Yeah, they're screaming cross-contamination. There's going to be an hour's adjournment, but look, this is all about Tony's stamp. Get him here, and I mean right now. How about we're talking? The hair's the only thing that nails Durante. If they're right and we can't use it, we've no case, and he's walking straight out of court. You're two years up, I still that. It's not the point. Remember me? I did try to introduce myself earlier on, but you were too busy doing a runner. DS Nixon, DS Turner, Sunhill, CID. Names, please. Pete Baker. This is my fiance, Mandy Vaughan. We owe you an apology. Why do you run away? We panicked. You see the school we were on? I'm pretty sure it's dodgy. Bought it for cash from a guy in the pub. I knew it was too cheap, but that's down to me. Mandy had nothing to do with it. This your engagement ring? I'm not sure. Oh, well, then you'd be pleased to know that it is, because the jeweller recognised you both. Thanks for bringing it back. Thought we were lost in the car park last night. Yeah? What were you doing there? really don't think that's any of your business. Well, I'm afraid we're going to have to disagree. And that's why we're nicking you both for burglary. Come on, mate. Before we start the interview, on the advice of my solicitor, I'd like to read a statement that Mandy and myself have prepared. OK. Go ahead, Mr Baker. <clears throat> we... Pete Baker and Mandy Vaughan. We're at the car park of Lexico Communications at about 9pm last night. We'd gone round the back of the premises as a courting couple. Unfortunately, we got into a heated argument. That's why Mandy's seen on CCTV throwing away her engagement ring and driving off. This morning, we returned to find the ring. When challenged by DS Nixon, we panicked and fled. You finished? No, there's a little bit more. We both wish to apologise for any inconvenience caused to DS Nixon. Pete Baker wishes to make a full confession regarding the scooter. Our van and home address have been searched and no stolen property found. We insist we didn't carry out the burglary we're accused of and neither of us are prepared to make any further comment. Thank you. It's quite a speech, Pete. What time did you arrive at Lexico Communications? I referred DS Nixon to my earlier statement and declined to make further comment. Yes, but if you've nothing to hide, you won't mind telling us your movements. I referred DS Nixon to my earlier statement and declined to make further comment. Save time and hassle. Charge me for the skewer and send us home. We're just getting started, Pete. And I know nothing when I hear it. But it's circumstantial, all you got the best. Yeah, well, that's a point. Okay, we haven't got any evidence. We know 
through there's a weak link. The relationship? It's breaking down, so if we can just help it along a bit. Oh, let's pull the beans on each other. Okay. What's happening with that office, Gregory? We've licked two bodies, Gov. Stafford Row and Barton Street are after them as well, but I think we might get there first. Nice one. So we get a good result. How comes you're on this? Uh, well, Phil cracked the case. I'm just sitting on an interview while he's off chasing some leads. Right. Well, that wasn't for Phil, and I'm still not happy about it. Stuart, considering what you think of Phil, and I know how important a big result is to you. Well, that's why I'll be having a few words in his ear. Can we just, just for a couple of seconds? <clears throat> You know, you said this morning that um, moving in together made sense. Well, I thought you might say because we're really good together. Oh, well, the, the whole thing about the petrol was just, just, just a joke. Well, I'm just hoping it's a case of action speaking louder than words. Was that a yes? I am warning you. Don't you dare mess me about. We haven't much time. I need you to think very carefully before you answer. Durante's first victim, Sean, you were first on the scene when she reported the rape. Yeah, she'd been dumped on waste ground. I dealt with Sean at the scene and then I went with her to hospital. You worked the night before at the cab office? Yeah, but I didn't see Durante. I mean, we worked the same shift, but we were doing different fares. There's a room at the cab office where the drivers can sit and have coffee. You were in there that night? I'm always in the drinking tea, yeah. Like I said, think carefully. Durante's got security footage from the cab office. You were wearing a white police shirt under your jacket. Well, you know, it's not long you're in a rush down a time to change, do you? Were you wearing the same shirt when you went on duty the next day? What is Durante saying? That's how come his hair was found on the victim. That I picked it up in the cab office. Were you wearing the shirt? Oh, I can't say yeah. But I can't say no either. That's it. We can't use the hair. Without forensics, we've got nothing. But, but this is cobblers! For a jury, it's possible cross-contamination, more than reasonable doubt. You can't just let Durante walk out of here. I've got no evidence to take into court. Believe me, I'm as gutted as you are. But the barrister's right. We have to withdraw the case. With it. We'll just have to reinvestigate, break down his wife's alibi, charge Durante again when we've enough to nail him. Look, I'm really sorry, but I wasn't to know I was working with a rapist. It's all right, it's not your fault. No one's to blame, it's just bad luck. Try explaining that to the victims, because I know how they're going to react. I dealt with Sean. Do you want me to give the call? No, no, it's all right. I'll do it. As soon as I'm the one who promised we'd put Durante away and that they wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. I know you made a statement against me, but, um... On your way, Giovanni. I'm talking to my mate. And no hard feelings. Eh? Don't push your luck. What? You've just proved I'm innocent. You're a filthy liar. If you think this is over, you've got another thing to over. You leave must... it, leave it. You don't want to blow any future case. I'm more worried about the fact that he's back out on the streets. Sarge. Yeah? Yeah. Looks like he's been splashing the old girl's cash receipts. They're all in order by date. He's spent thousands in the last few weeks. New suits, shoes, jewellery. Keith Durante has just walked from court. Oh, they haven't given him bail. Case collapsed. Had to be withdrawn. Sarge. Oh, Sarge. I, I just spoke to Mr Summers. He lives on the top floor. Yeah? Well, he says he saw Derek leaving. That must have been about ten minutes before you put the door in. Was Audrey with him? No, he says he saw Derek on the stairs. Now, apparently, he was in quite a state. Couldn't get out of here quick enough. Oh, and he's asked him to help him with some large sort of packing case as well, you know, like a trunk. Did he say what was in it? No, he reckoned it was quite heavy, though. Apparently, the two of them had quite a struggle getting it down the stairs. Did he know where Derek was going? No, he said a cab picked him up outside. But not before he'd been on his mobile to the firm, asking them to get here in a hurry. Does he know the name of the cab firm? No, he said all the cars looked the same. White body work, black room. It's a candy cab, isn't it? Musto Street. 
Right, I'm going to go and talk to Mr. Summers. You two, get down the cab firm, see if you can have a word with the driver. So what's he done with Audrey? My money's on the trunk. Well, you know, if it is our suspect, then um, he's got some nerve. <sighs> All right, well, we'll be in touch then. Thank you, sir. Right. OK, well, we could be onto something. Put the Barton Street case files. Um, I phoned the key holders to see if they'd seen Mandy or the scooter. And that was LS Data Limited. Is that the IT company they, uh, they broke into and they pinched half a dozen laptops? Yeah. Boss doesn't remember being followed, but he's been mean to call because he got the company phone bill yesterday and there was a £13 charge for a premium rate call line. So obviously he's thinking it's one of the staff, right? So he checks it out. The call took place at the time of the burglary. What sort of premium line? Live sex chat. £1.75 a minute. Has to be Pete. He's sat there, he's waiting for Mandy to pick him up. Call Lexicor Communications. Now. I knew he worked with Durante at the cab office. I should have seen it coming. Look how many years service the DI's got under his belt. Even he didn't spot it. It's hardly a good impression. My first big case walked straight out of court. Listen, you can't be blamed if Tony can't be bothered to change his shirt, can you? CID won't just let this drop. They'll find some new evidence or something. It's hope so. As if Durante goes out there and rapes again. You can't blame yourself. Come on, June. With all the experience I've had, I should have known better. It's just I was so knackered with the cabbie and coming in here. If I'd been cabbing in the first place, I would never have met Durante. Look, you've been in the job long enough to know you're a good copper. Now, with no sign of Audrey and Derek going missing. Just stop feeling sorry for yourself and get out there and find her. Yeah. There are some receipts in there where Derek's made payments to limited companies, so if you run a check, I'll go through his phone records. Right, well, yeah, if you could um, give us the exact time that the call was made from the Lexical Communications, that would be great. Okay, all right. It's 2037, 2044. That is after the alarm went off. It has to be Pete. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it takes all sorts, mate. Well, um, all right, thanks for your help. So, it's the same 0898 number. Can I find the woman he was talking to? If she recognises his voice... Lines think alike. That's an audio lineup. It's bad enough, isn't it, being burgled? Without having to pay for all this on top. Well, research shows that a lot of villains get aroused when they're thieving. It's the thrill of breaking in. Really? Really. Oh, yes, good afternoon. Uh, this is Detective Sergeant Turner, Sunhill CID. <laughs> no, no, love, this isn't a fantasy. I know I really am copper. Yeah, so if you could put your supervisor on, <laughs> and if you could be quick about it, at 175 a minute. Is this a wind-up? Do I look like the sort to use sex lines? Now, this particular caller phones Barbara quite a lot, and always says the same thing. I'm not recording this rubbish. Well, we could always play Barbara your voice from our interview. Does Mandy know about this? Not yet. But if you don't record this, she's going to think the same as us. Yeah, that you've got something to hide. Especially as Barbara remembers hearing a burglar alarm in the background. Nice and clearly, Pete. Headmistress. I've been told to report to your study by my form teacher. I've let you down, headmistress. I've been a naughty boy. Again. Happy. Believe me, Sean, we're as good as you. It um, wasn't our fault. It was down to the forensics. Yeah, um, I, I think we'd, we'd let you down too. But we're going to do all we can to get him straight back into custody. Is th She's hung up. And uh, Sean's the strongest of the three victims. That's a Beth. <laughs> she uh, starts to shake when you mention his name. Well, you're going to have to call her, Kezia. Look, we'll check the case file, see if we've missed anything, OK? Good luck.
Hi, Beth. It's um, DC Walker here. Um, if you can give me a call on my office phone, there has been a development in the case. All right, thanks. I've been showing off in front of the other boys and I haven't done my homework. I know I must be punished with six of the best. If you're going to keep smiling... Sorry. <clears throat> this isn't the CID wind-up, is it? <laughs> no, no. This is totally on the level. We're doing an audio line-up. Start again, please. I've been showing off in front of the other boys and I haven't done my homework. I know I must be punished with six of the best. Right. Thank you, Smithy. We'll let you know. Yeah. <coughs> Reg, you're up. If you don't mind, Sarge, I'd rather not. No, oh, hang on. If I might have myself. <coughs> Sarge, uh, copies said this aren't going to go around the team, are they? Definitely mm. not. We logged as evidence, mate. When have you already? All right. Uh, can I have a uh, practice first? Oh, yeah. Ed Mistress, I've been sent to see you by my form teacher. I've let you down again, Ed Mistress. I've been a very naughty boy. Perfect. Oh, thanks. This is you, Pete. Voice number three. Headmistress, I've been told to report to your study by my form teacher. I've let you down, headmistress. That's him. I've been a You sure? Boy. Definitely. Okay, thank you. As you can see, she positively identifies your voice. And she confirms it in a written statement. You can't be serious. They can't use this as evidence. This puts you in the premises of Lexicor Communications at the time of the burglary and at LS Data Limited. And we're checking the phone records of the other companies too. I suppose Mandy has to wear this. Well, it's part of the investigation. I'd like to consult my solicitor in private. Certainly, Pete. Take as long as you need. Right, the cab office finally tracked down the driver. Apparently he dropped Derek and the trunk off at the Franken Road Community Centre. There's a receipt here for the Franken Road Community Centre. Derek paid him 200 quid last week. And he told the driver that he was going to America tomorrow afternoon. So what's he doing running around with a truck today then? Sorry. To Derek and Audrey. <laughs> Martin sees me as a geriatric old granny. He won't understand that I've fallen in love. There are just a couple of questions. Uh, Audrey's account. What happened to the money? Well, well we found ourselves a house. I, it's not just Audrey's 67,000. I've put 112,000 to it. How did this all start? Oh, well, well, it was at the home. No one really took much notice of Derek. He was fixing the radiator in my room and we got chatting. We, we were amazed how much we had in common. We're both very keen on musicals. Derek started lending me CDs. Then Audrey mentioned she was quite keen on ballroom dancing. Well, I'd always been very keen to take it up. 
<laughs> oh, that was very daring. I, I sneaked out and I met Derek round the corner from the home. <laughs> and, well, that's when it happened. Our first waltz at the dance class. We looked into each other's eyes and... That was it. Audrey, I want to have a word about my dad, Norman. He lives in the home with you. Well, I've seen you popping in to visit. Uh, uh, when I was with him today, it just seems all the fight's gone out of him. Oh, I was the same. What, you start not to bother? We'll have to fix Norman up with one of the nurses. Then he'll come to life again. Have you any idea how ridiculous you look? Get in the car. Uh, Audrey's not going anywhere. If I hear one more word out of you. If that's your attitude, we will we'll step outside. Look, why don't we go into an interview room and talk this through in there, eh? You should be arresting him for conning her. He has to be after the money. No, you're wrong. They're buying a house together. In fact, Derek has put more money into it than your mum has. You should be delighted. It'll save you bothering to visit every few weeks. I get over as much as I can. It's not as if I needed nursing care. You stuck me in that home for your benefit because you didn't want me cluttering up your spare room. But I... I was glad to go. Don't come running to us when he's spent it all and thrown you out. I've been a naughty boy. Again. Oh, well, that puts him in the premises at last night's burglary. And at LS Data. That wasn't the first time. Throwing away your engagement ring. Things aren't going well for you and Pete. What was Raoul about? Because he keeps going on at me to get married. He's obsessed with it. Well, from what I can see, you haven't been together that long. I ran a few checks and, uh, well, you've no record. But you used to live with someone called Andy Marchant? Now, he and Pete have convictions for thieving together. Mm, and this would have happened if he'd still been around. So, a few months ago, Andy gets sent down for three years. And Pete suggests you take over? If this is the sort of thing he gets up to, Mandy, you don't owe him any favours. This is your first offence. If you cooperate, you might stay out of prison. Pete said you've nothing on us. We know everything, Mandy. How you follow the keyholder home, you watch the house, and then you phone Pete if he doesn't rush straight back. I can see you're having trouble ending this relationship. This is your best chance. When Andy went inside, I'd, I got lumbered with all his debts. Did he owe a lot of money? About five grand. I didn't know he hadn't paid the rent or the council tax. Not to mention the local bookie who started turning nasty. So then Pete turns up, says you can make some easy cash? Well, to be honest, following the key holders, it was exciting at first, you know, a bus. Magic scene wears off, though. Last night, we got away with a few grand's worth. I, I wanted to blow it on a fortnight in the sun. He says we'll use it as a deposit on a house. Ever since we started sleeping together, it's been nothing but grief. She opens her fat mouth. I'm not going down for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, stay there for a second. Hey, look after me. Right. Well, I've nicked your office burglars. They're cooperating, and the DI thinks you got the result. So much the catch. I don't know. See, Sam asked me to cover. That I just dropped you in it. Oh, hey, can I give you a bit of advice? I think you want to try being a bit more reliable in the future. See, I think that's why I'm moving the Sam, because she knows that I won't let her down. So Beth didn't take it too well, eh? Miss Beth's going to pieces on the phone. I'm calling her mum on my mobile. Tell her to get round there fast, girl. I'm sorry. Just thought I'd see what was happening. Well, we've been through the file. The problem is the alibi. The only way forward is to get Mrs. Durante to admit she's lying. Well, if I can help in any way. Well, maybe next time try changing your shirt. If you don't mind, Gov, it's, it's one of those days where I just need to get home. Sure. Gov, I've got a confession to make. This morning, I get a phone call saying Alfie was having problems breathing. 
and the suspects got away. The result was down to Sam and Stuart. They cover for me while I rushed off to see how Alfie was. Well, it's a good job we nicked them, isn't it? Next time there's a problem, tell me first. How is he? He had an allergic reaction to cow's milk. You know what kids are like? Within five minutes, he was right as rain. Good. This isn't like you. Coming clean. Well, I just don't want people thinking I'm unreliable. Be honest, Dad. You're not really happy here, are you? Hmm. Don't hear me complaining. But, uh, sometimes you can have a bit too much care and attention, can't you? I, I was looking at Audrey and Derek earlier on and... Well, you know... I reckon it might be time that... You and I should have looked together. Look, this place is not doing you any good at all, is it? And me, well, I'm having to do all this extra cabbie and to pay for it, and, and now I'm beginning to mess up at work. So, um... I think you should move in with me. I, I know there's going to be more than a few arguments, but... We'll work something out. You think you're getting me there to run round after you? Times like this, they're the skin folks, so I'm gonna get them in. As long as you don't expect me to be good company. Well, you've got to stand up for a while, got loads of things to get in about your suit, yeah? Look, you're gonna get the rent now, it's just gonna take longer than this one. Now, mate, uh, two of whatever that is, uh, two more up there, and uh, pop the beer in the white one. Look at over it. What have I got to be miserable about sitting here with you? I'm glad someone could forget about it. Should have tried talking to Beth. Kezia. No. I hope you're not being naughty, boys. Oh, very funny, Sarge. Go. Uh, well, I've one of those with you. Really, I should be rollicking you both, covering for Phil. Yeah, he came into my office, held his hands up. Did he? Sorry, he had a family problem. Yeah, well, like I told him, it's a good job you got a result, eh? Did he say if he was going to come in for one? No, he's about to go on. Gus. I, um, I might actually nip off and see how Alfie's doing. Phil already told you the kid's fine. Yeah, but that was this morning, and I, I just want to make sure there haven't been any problems since then. Sam, we're supposed to be celebrating. Yeah, I know. I'm only going to be five minutes. Here, hold that. Kezia, hang on. Look, you can't just go knocking on Durante's front door. Think about it. You're going to blow the whole case. What case? There isn't one. This is what he wants. I'm telling him he hasn't got away with it and to stay away from the victim. You are never going to get him back into court if he is screaming harassment. Open up, Durante! Constable, you step away from the door. Do it now. Hello. Um, we've had people charged with rape and then released, and then they've had trouble with their neighbours, so uh, we were just checking that you're OK. Yeah, sounded like it. We were just checking you're OK. You know it makes sense. All that makes sense is not letting him get away with it. According to the DI, you gave us the credit. Well, it's the right thing to do, isn't it? You and Stuart got the result. What is it with you today? Be careful. You're in danger of becoming quite likeable. <laughs> Stuart tells me he's moving in with you. I'm going to give it a whirl. Let's see how we go. You've started something now, though, haven't you? I need to confide in anybody about him. Anytime you like. I've got a drink waiting. Sam. Hey. Not much fun in the pub after the Durante result. Come on, you. I'm taking you for a meal. What were you saying? Nothing. Go and enjoy yourself. Next 
time on The Bill. I saw her getting into the car. I was this close, Neil, this close. And you're absolutely certain it was Amy. But it feels like he's closing in on her, preparing for another attack. Look, just drop all thoughts of reopening this rape investigation until we uncover some real evidence. <laughs>